We're going to talk about Hurricane Helene, okay? I haven't been able to talk about it a lot because Israel's been pummeling Lebanon. I find it rather odd. I don't know if I'm like alone in this. I've been talking to some normies about this shit too. There isn't like enough coverage on this. Like the media hasn't even like talked about the devastation as much, which is crazy. Like entire towns are underwater. I feel like this would be leading, you know what I mean? Non stop. North Carolina was hit with flooding it hasn't seen in a century. Some calling it biblical. This is the scene in Asheville, which is now isolated after roads leading into the town flooded and cell towers were knocked down in the storm. So this is what we know right now. At least 91 people are dead and that number is expected to rise and power is out to some 2.1 million customers across that region. We have team coverage of the This is some biblical ass bro, which is crazy. It's crazy because people don't seem to recognize that like the once in every fucking hundred years type shit keeps happening every year. This used to happen once every fucking 50 years max. Okay. Maybe every hundred years. Now it's every year, brother. Do we just kind of cast this aside? Is What do we do? Do we just kind of act like it's uh, normal now? This is a, this is the thing. I don't, I don't really know how to parse through this information. I find it rather odd that like the devastation is so massive. The devastation is so goddamn massive and the coverage of it is like not up to par, but I don't really know how to match the coverage in general. Like it's, it's never the best kind of analysis to be like, oh, the media is not paying enough attention to this thing because like they obviously are covering it, but it does kind of shock me how limited the information is like the thing I, the thing I mean about this is that I'm not saying the media is not covering it at all. Of course it is, but this kind of shit would be like week long, if not month long news coverage. Like this is like a yearly event. Now it almost feels like we are living in a post Katrina world where Katrina is a yearly event. And the scale of the devastation is Katrina across multiple territories. And it's like not as big. It doesn't feel like it's as big as a fucking story. Like you had, bro, you had Kanye West on the fucking phone trying to do fundraisers on television when that was happening. That's why he had that famous moment where he was like, George W. Bush doesn't care about black people. Like that's, that's from that. That's how big of a thing that was. You know, it, it holds the attention of people for like maybe a day, maybe two days. And then we just fucking move on. I don't know if it's like also because like our attention span is limited i don't know if it's because we you know i've just been thinking about it a lot i don't know if it's because of our attention spans that are limited now as a consequence of like TikTok or whatever i'm not saying that this is like a deliberate effort to like normalize it's like hyper normalization of these kinds of like climate atrocities um i don't think that but it is strange yeah regarding coverage bridges are rendering entire regions virtually entirely inaccessible by land there's no power there's no internet i'm sure information will be scarce coming out of it from the ground versus being able to get aerial shots like we have this is like apocalyptic levels of destruction as a chatter put it and i i don't know man <laughs> it's just it's it's it is really 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 fucked up like we are directly causing it with anthropogenic climate change okay as as uh as the world heats up more and more, I guess, in the simplest terms, uh, directly as a consequence of our emissions, things that scientists keep saying are going to happen are happening over and over again. And a big chunk of people, a big chunk of people are just like, nah, I'm different, dog. We're different. It's fine. The only climate, like the most significant, most consequential climate change policy that we have seems to be the border policy a more militant border a more white nativist more militant border policy is like the only thing that we are uh setting up for like we're not hardening our infrastructure even enough um and half of the entire political field basically denies it's even happening and is like trying to legislate away the mention of it like you look at in florida it's like like don't say it don't say it's real please and it blows my mind. Uh, Fango lives. Our EV uh, correspondent says easy way to explain climate change makes storms stronger. Global warming makes water warmer. Warmer water has more energy. So storms passing over that water gain more energy from the warmer water, which means there's stronger storms. We've added several billion nuclear bombs worth of energy to the ocean in a couple decades. Yes, that is a good way to explain it. Thank you. That's also partially due to climate change migration. No, I know. I know. That's why I'm saying like our border security measures uh, is a climate change infrastructure hardening initiative. It's because uh, there are going to be more and more uh, like people that previously worked in like the agricultural sector 
that are not going to be able to work. So they're going to migrate as their, econo uh, their economy is devastated. They're going to migrate north. They're going to come to America because there, there is ecological disaster there and they don't have any fucking money to even harden their infrastructure nor uh, overcome the, the damage that climate change is, is causing in those regions. It, w what's crazy about it is, is beyond the, the uh, migration patterns, right? We literally have basically at this point you know, developing nation levels of, of infrastructure in the wealthiest nation on the fucking planet, dude. Like, it's wild to me that we just straight up uh, have a situation where half of the political population, half, the, half of our government is like, it doesn't exist, so don't do anything about it. The other half is like, it does exist, but we are going to be susceptible to political pressure from the right and from moneyed interest, like in the oil and gas sector. So we're going to keep drilling, baby. We're going to keep in fracking. And we're, we hear you. We see you. We want to trust the science. But also, we're not going to trust the science that much. Because as long as it harms the bottom line of, like, oil and gas giants, then we're going to not trust the science that much, right? It's kind of like the classic Chevron, Exxon, Mobil having full knowledge of uh, the, the carbon emissions causing anthropogenic climate change and global warming in general and like refusing to do anything about it. And as a matter of fact, having that full knowledge and then only using that knowledge to create PR structures against it so that you can create an environment where like 30 to 40 percent of the entire nation doesn't even believe it's real, right? That's what they did since the 80s. They were like, oh shit, this is going to be a problem in the future. So let's make sure that it doesn't become a problem for us and our bottom line by creating an entire system in media to just lie to the American public and to say that it's like fucking bullshit. And that is one of the fucking negative consequences of this reality because you're seeing biblical levels of destruction. Okay, you're watching biblical levels of destruction, and what are some Americans saying about it? How are some people reckoning with this reality? How are some people dealing with this reality? They're dealing with it by fucking blaming like weather machines or something. If you are refusing to reckon with the reality in front of you, you are going to look for alternative realities as to why things are happening. And that's why there are so many conspiratorial psychopaths out there. This happened in Hawaii too. Oh, it must be like space lasers that did the fucking uh, fires. It cannot be that the, the brush is just simply drier than it has ever been. It cannot be like full-blown ecological collapse that caused massive wildfires. It's got to be fucking space lasers. Look at the blue cars. The blue cars didn't light on fire. Like we are purposely making our population dumber and dumber and dumber because it's like easier to control and manipulate in some ways, but also simultaneously, this is not tenable. This is not sustainable, okay? I don't know how else to describe it. Shit is fucked up. I find it damaging the public discourse in general. I find it terrifying that more and more people are just like desperately clinging on to whatever kind of fucking misinformation they can because of our uh, abject powerlessness in the face of these systems that are turning out these results, no matter what you say and do, you know, uh, where will we go from here? Storm's aftermath. We start in Asheville with Faith Abube. Good morning, Faith. Yeah, good morning to you, Robin. It's been days without power, cell phone service, or safe drinking water for so many people here in Western North Carolina. Right now, we're in historic Biltmore Village, a popular shopping and dining enclave here in Asheville, which was submerged in water. There's debris all over the place and a muddy mess left behind. This stretches for miles and miles. One official calling the damage biblical devastation. This morning, the death toll climbing after Helene barreled through the southeast. The massive storm killing more than 91 people from Florida to Virginia. In Buncombe County, North Carolina, our affiliate WSOC capturing the scope of the damage from above. At least 30 people declared dead, dozens more unaccounted for. These response teams are working around the clock to make rescues to access neighborhoods. The extreme floods washing away homes and bridges. Get out of the way. Oh, oh, yeah. At one point, North Carolina DOT forced to close more than 400 roads, deeming them unsafe for travel. The weather, it's weather modification conspiracies are not new. They have escaped Twitter for a very long time. I know. The, pro the problem is I think more and more people now believe it. That's the issue. 
it's getting way more broader play, in my opinion. Now, I have no data to back this up. It just feels that way, and maybe I'm wrong. But yes, they have they have existed for quite a while. But like things that were relegated to the Alex Jones like ham radio broadcast are now being publicized by like many different independent media outlets that have broad reach. A lot of this reach was stunted in the past, okay? You had to like have a fucking uh, AM radio broadcast, exactly know when to tune in. You had to be really invested in the conspiracy theories. Now you can just like accidentally reach them online on your fucking TikTok feed. You, you can accidentally reach them and be duped by them online on your YouTube feed, on your Twitter feed, if you're on Twitter. Like it, it things that used to be uh, limited to like obscure forums and, and AM radio broadcasts in the past are now broadly at the forefront of not mainstream media necessarily, but at least like the only other massive, very impactful way of, of getting information. It's just like everywhere online, everywhere. Unprecedented tragedy that requires an unprecedented response. In Asheville, many residents growing desperate, cell service and potable water out for days. This is apocalyptic, not just for Canton, uh, but the entire region. And Canton Mayor Zepp Smathers telling ABC News it's nearly impossible to reach emergency management due to the cell service outage. To see our cell phones completely black out and not have the ability to allow people on their own accord to check on their loved ones or say, hey, look, you live near water. Please leave. It's so inconsiderate when climate protesters block roads or it's so inconsiderate when, uh, you know, climate. I'm glad that we're like fucking arresting uh, the only people that are like, hey, guys, you should pay attention to this because it's going to kill you one day.